Kaleidoscope, a weekly public affairs program brought to you in partnership with the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, Kaleidoscope Magazine, and News Channel 5. Good morning, everyone. Good to have you with us today. A Prizen's president and CEO, Michael Kappas, and its senior vice president of national affairs, Jay Seaton, are here today to talk about new programs and services that will be available to clients in 2014. Later on, we'll hear from Jason Daniels. He's director of strategy and engagement at United Way of Greater Cleveland. And later on the broadcast after that, we will hear from Dr. Jacqueline Baker, rather Dr. Jacqueline Bailey, whom I know very well, and Dr. Iyad Hassan of the Cleveland Clinic Tosic Cancer Institute. Good morning again. I'm Leon Bibb. Kind of a throat problem today, but we'll muddle through it. This is Kaleidoscope, and so we begin. Good to have my two good friends here, Jason, uh, uh, Jay Seaton, rather, uh, Senior Vice President, and Michael Kappas, President and CEO of Apprise. And good to have you with us today. Thanks for having us. It's yeah. a pleasure. Well, let's start with you, Mr. President. Let, tell, tell us about the mission of Apprise. And what is it you try to do? Well, our, our mission has long been to offer valuable financial assistance uh, to those families across the country that, that need our assistance to help them work out their financial problems, to help them understand and better utilize their, their financial means, mm -hmm. get them back on track. Yeah, and you, Jay, uh, you and I have talked about this for years, about how people get, get financially in, in hock. Yes. What's your best advice to stay out of hock so that they don't have to get somebody to get them out. Some, you and I, Leon, have talked about this countless times, and really the old advice is the best advice. I, I was talking to somebody on your floor crew just recently. Pay yourself first if you can. Use credit, but use it smartly. If you can, pay off all your credit card bills every month. If you can't, do more than the minimum payment. Mm -hmm. There's a reason things are cliches. Yeah. They're old, but they work. Michael, one of the things your company does is try to get people back, back, back on track. Yes, sir. How, how do you do that, and what's it cost them to come to you and, and get some advice on getting out of financial straits? Well, first of all, our service is, is completely free to anybody that comes to us. They get, they get an hour to an hour and a half of free educational counseling where we help them understand their budget. If they were to go on our program, they're asked to donate, but no one is ever turned away. They're asked to mm -hmm. donate a small amount of money per month uh, to, to help us offer the service to others. Yeah. You've got some new programs for the, for, for the year 2014. Yeah. I, I think one thing we realized is a long time ago when Jay started in this business, we were primarily a, uh, a, a company that dealt with unsecured debt credit cards. And then we expanded because we realized a lot of times if you have trouble with your credit cards, you're going to have trouble with your house. So we got into the housing counseling business. Now as we look at people and, their, and where we've come from this last four or five years, people are trying to rebuild yeah. their, their financial lives. They're trying to understand how do I get back on track? How am I going to save for retirement? Send my child to school? And, and so often we find, and, and I don't know, the viewing audience here, I wonder how many times we, we look at our credit report. Our credit report is so important to us anymore. So we're going to try a, an approach that when our client comes to us, we're going to completely figure out what they need, get them on our program, get them off our program, and then start them into the next phase of their financial wellness. We've got a phone number on the screen. You can call 800-355-2227, or you can go to apprisen.com, get information on everything we're talking about, even how to get in touch with this organization. Jay, you and I have pulled out for years. We always pull out the credit card and talk about this little piece of plastic here that everybody says, oh, I can use credit, and, and, and I can have it today. I, I can have it today, but I should also be thinking about how I might pay it off. I mean, you and I talk about, uh, you know, again, our, our theme is some of the old ways are smart. That card doesn't leap out of a purse or a wallet. We have to go ahead and bring it out and use it. We should understand what it means to use it and what it means to pay it off. Uh, I talk about debt, D-E-B-T, as the worst four-letter word there is. Yeah, Worse than is. those other ones are bad yeah, enough, but that's the worst one. And you and I have talked about that. You were raised in a similar fashion in terms of yeah. uh, your first job you talk about frequently. Yeah, all which the was, time. Yeah, Dad said pay off your debts and, put, and save something. 
out of the dollar still and 25 works. cents he gave me to take out the garbage. <laughs> still and works. Was. He says, save 25 cents of that now. That's what you're telling your, 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 your clients, aren't you, Michael, when they come in? you got to save something. You've got to save something. We, we, over the last five years, have seen uh, a trend that, that uh, a lot of people who had never been in debt, who had never been in trouble, they lost their job, they got into a financial situation that they had never been before. But we're always reminding them, once we get out of it, Americans, for the first time in many, many years, are actually saving money. And while that sounds like a novel idea, we're seeing more and more people starting to, to work dollar by dollar to build a little nest egg, which we all need. We've got about a minute remaining in this segment. What do you tell people who say, they tell you, Michael, I don't make a lot of money. Now, how can I save if, I, if my salary is at so-and-so dollars? Well, that's, that's a great question, because we all know that it's, it's getting harder and harder. But within your financial budget, I think Jay said it earlier, you got to pay yourself first. Whether it's a dollar, five dollars, and regardless of how much you make, you can find a way to live within your means and to provide for yourself. It, it can be done. Yeah. Now, you're headquartered in Columbus. Yes. And, and Jay, of course, you're working out here Cleveland. as vice president. You're working out of Northeast Cleveland. Ohio. Yes. Are you seeing similar kinds of things across the country and across the state? I, I'd let Jay respond. I yes. can tell you. In a, wor in a word, yes. People are uh, dissimilar in some ways, but very similar in terms of other ways. And they can be reached in that fashion, and this message reaches them. Yeah. Uh, once we get into the holiday season, what do you tell people about this little piece of plastic, Michael? I, I'd love to tell them to leave it at home, but, but in, in reality, uh, they, they, we're going to tell people, make that list, and if you have to use credit, make sure you could pay it back in a reasonable period of when, time. When the bill comes, pay it off. Pay it off. If you can. There, there, there's a sad statistic that people who spend at Christmas, it takes them 18 months to pay off the debt. And that, that's just a Leave bad Leave them with situation. the comment that you and I have talked about before. Don't be paying for this holiday at the next at the holiday. Next holiday. holiday. Best thing to do is, uh, if, you can't, if you can't see your way clear to the end of the road, put it back in your pocket, huh? Exactly. Use it, be exactly. smart. Be we'll smart put it with back it. in our yes. pocket right here. <laughs> Okay. Thank you very much, Thank Michael Kappas and Jay Seaton of Apprizen. We appreciate you being here. 800-355-2227 is the phone number or Apprizen.com. They will keep you from getting in debt, but if you are in debt, they will get you out of debt free. Thank, Thank you, you, gentlemen. Thank you so much. My pleasure. I'm going to take a break. In a moment, we're going to talk about a big program coming up. But first, these words, especially for you. Welcome back to more of Kaleidoscope today. Glad to have you with us. The United Way of Greater Cleveland and Cuyahoga County has teamed up to launch a referral service for area veterans. Vice President of Strategy and Engagement Jason Daniels is here to tell us about this United Way program as well as the partnership with the Cleveland Metropolitan School District aimed at getting students to succeed. Got a lot on your plate right there. There's a lot on the plate, absolutely. Thank you, Jason, for yes. being here. Tell me about this partnership that the United Way of Greater Cleveland and Cuyahoga County has to help military veterans. Absolutely. So, um, you know, last month was uh, we were celebrating our veterans on Veterans Day, and that was the day that we launched a unique partnership uh, through our United Way 211 line. 211 is the 24 hour, uh, seven day a week referral hotline that you can call. Just dial 211 from your cell phone or home phone. Uh, veterans specifically and their families, if they have needs, any needs, uh, family needs, any needs related to health and human service issues, they can call 211 and they can get help. And I will tell you that just in the last month, we've already received over 1,000 calls for assistance. Right. Absolutely. Well, anybody can dial on that 211. Absolutely. You know, whether you're a veteran or not. That's right. You can call about Yes. If you've got a problem or, or you don't know where to go, absolutely. 211 will tell you yes. where, where, where they can direct you. Yes, specifically with 211, um, if you have uh, any, any needs, you can say uh, utility assistance. You know, food insecurity is a big issue here in Cuyahoga County. Uh, last year, 15% of our calls into 211 were sp specifically for food assistance, but also rent assistance. Uh, many of our families are sometimes struggling or they really just don't know yeah. where to go to get help. So you can call that line. For veterans, if they call, um, they just let them know that they're a veteran. We have a person who is specifically able to work with them on veterans related issues for them and their families. Give me an idea of some of those veteran relation issues. Absolutely. So there's a few. Um, there's many folks who are uh, deployed and their families are in financial needs. Uh, sometimes we're finding that spouses, men and women are calling to find out what opportunities exist for them to help them meet the bills. Uh, we talked about food insecurity as one of those things. There's also, uh, it's, uh, we're finding some of those veterans' families, it's hard for them to navigate through uh, the health and human 
the service system itself. And uh, those veterans can call and, and get linked up to services here or even in Washington, D.C. What about those former members of the military, veterans who have come home from a war zone, yes. Iraq, Afghanistan, or, or someplace else, mm -hmm. and they've got, and they've got uh, j just getting back into society. I'm a Vietnam veteran. Yes. When I came home from Vietnam, it took a while to get my footing yes. again yes. as a civilian and uh, find and negotiate my way back into society and get everything cleared up. Right. They can call. They can call. There are, um, you know, we, we, we talk about it. Um, there's a lot of uh, our veterans who are coming back, and there's some mental health uh, issues that are going there. Sometimes that they don't recognize, but their families are recognizing. Uh, the opportunity for them to call this helpline and figure out where they can go to get assistance is great. Um, and then even for kids, you know, yeah. sometimes it's difficult. Uh, those kids are away from their moms or their dads or family members, and just to get acclimated back into that family unit after being deployed, mm -hmm. those are critical uh, opportunities uh, where th this 2 on one helpline can assist. The 211 helpline, we'll keep that in mind. I certainly know as from personal experience coming home from Vietnam, there was a lot of things. I saw a lot of guys with yeah. a lot of problems coming home because we had seen yes. so much, yes. believe yes. me, what I still think yeah. about in my own mind. Yeah. But you've also got something going on with the Cleveland Metropolitan School District. Now tell yeah, me about that. Well, we're really excited about our work in education. So we're focused that we're driving our impact in the areas of education, income, and health. Uh, but specifically, we're working, with, uh, we're working with Mr. Gordon over at the school system. And I tell you, it's a tremendous partnership. Uh, just yesterday we had a press conference where uh, we've been putting our focus on how do we wrap services around kids and families. We have many folks in our community who are in need of course. Educationally we want to make sure that we're graduating every kid in this community. Right. Um, and so with that uh, we have partnered with the Metropolitan School District. There's 17 schools that we have chosen to wrap services around. Yesterday our press conference was really about those 13 uh, health and human service agencies or, or program agencies who are really going to help us to do that. So uh, that was what our press conference was uh, yesterday, and I tell you, it's going to be a, just a unique partnership. We've been doing this now for about a year. Uh, we helped actually pass the levy uh, for the school system, and so we're all in on this, this work in education. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, of course, the, the children are so vital. When, when families are suffering, the children are suffering yes. as well, yes. and they've got to deal with going to school and getting the education and mm -hmm. get, getting their heads clear so they can put that information in their heads. So a few of the things um, that I think will really help our parents uh, specifically, my motto is that if mom is sick, the entire family is sick. Right. So what we recognize is that our kids are showing up to school with these issues, but the issues aren't necessarily uh, related to just the kids' learning environment. There are things that are happening at home. So these wraparound support services that United Way and these key agencies are going to be providing are services um, like after-school programming services, making sure that kids are linked up to that. We have a lot of parents uh, their kids are, are in the home of a grandparent or an aunt. Those caregivers don't oftentimes, they're not really connected. Those wraparound supports are going to be able to assist with that. So we have a number of different uh, agencies who are going to provide uh, their expertise in key areas. Uh, we're going to, those agencies, those 13 agencies, yeah. there's one person at each school that's going to be working to coordinate those services across the board. And let me have your, your flyer right over here. Absolutely. We'll get a shot of this in our, in our final 30 seconds or so. Uh, th this is about the, 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 the 2 on one We yes. want to let people get Get, a, get an idea of well, what that's about. Maybe we can get a shot of that on, on camera number three. Yeah. This is vital. This is what it United is. Way is doing. Yes. Here, here, here in Northeast Ohio. And, and uh, we're just trying to help people. You've been helping people for 60 years or yes. so. Yes. All the way back to, 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 to its very beginning. By the way, the United Way concept began in Cleveland. It did. It's a national campaign, but it began in Cleveland yes, many years did. ago. And once again, there's a phone number on the screen we're going to put up there, 436-2100. You can get more information on everything we're talking about, or you can go to unitedwaycleveland.org, unitedwaycleveland.org. And by the way, you can see this entire broadcast on newsnet5.com, our website. Simply go to the website, click on it, and you can see this entire thing all over again, yes. or if you miss part of it. Yes. Good to have you on the broadcast, Jason. Thank you. Appreciate J being here. Jason Daniels is Vice President of Strategy and Engagement for United Way of Greater Cleveland. Good to have you with us, my friend. Thank you. Take care and thank you for what you do. Absolutely. Everybody over there. Coming up next, saving lives through cancer screening. I'm Leon Bibb, taking a break. We'll be back in just a moment. You're in touch with Kaleidoscope. I'm Leon Bibb. Glad to have you with us. Cancer screenings are important in early detection of cancer. Joining me this morning are Dr. Jacqueline Bailey, Director of Community Outreach, and Dr. Iyad Hassan. Director of Clinical Survivorship Services at the Cleveland Clinic Tosic Cancer Institute. We'll talk about the high incidence of cancer in the African American community and explain how the Tosic Cancer Institute 
is meeting the health needs of local communities. Good to have you with us, Dr. Jacqueline Bailey. And Good to be here. Yeah, Hassan, thank, thank you, you so very much, much for having me. Good to have you both with us. Tell me about this, uh, the, the mission of the Cleveland Clinic Toxic Cancer, Cancer Institute. What's its overall mission? What do you try to do? We really want to stop cancer in its tracks, and we know that we can do that if we get the message out. So our, our mission is really um, education and awareness in the community that has the highest mortality rates, um, providing screening opportunities, and also just um, making people understand that the health care system is accessible to them. Yeah, and so you've got to get screened. Mm -hmm. that, that's all part of it. Dr. Hassan, uh, tell me a little bit about your role as Director of Clinical Survivorship Services at the clinic's Tosic Cancer Institute. Well, cancer survivorship is a concept that has really grown in the past few years. The idea of cancer survivorship is the fact that you have completed treatment and you've actually gotten to the stage in your life where now you need to start looking at other health aspects of your life. You've been able to control your disease, but now we need to start looking at how about heart disease? What about tobacco cessation? How about actually exercising a little bit more? Because people focus so much on their disease, they forget about the other aspects that sadly can actually end their life. There are some things that we can do to help ourselves, as you talked about quit smoking and, and, and exercise more and stuff like that. Correct. But at the same time, while you're in cancer survivorship, which is also in reference to like community outreach, we have to also screen for other cancers. So for example, uh, the incidence of a uh, female in the African American community in Cuyahoga County is much higher than that of anywhere in the state of Ohio. So with that being said, if we're able to treat your cancer, meaning breast, what about the facts of screening you for colon cancer? Right. And so if you're in the age group, we actually push very much about the fact of educating our patients to, even in survivorship, whether it's also in community outreach, to get screened for all cancers themselves. Dr. Bailey, I understand that the late stage incidence of cancer in African American communities is especially high. What, what is the reason for that? Well, we find when we go out and talk to people in the community, mostly fear. They're afraid to come in. They don't want to know. There are other barriers like insurance, uh, financial barriers. There's also just the myth that if they go and get screened for cancer, they might get cancer. And so that's why education and awareness is so important. And we go out to the churches, to the barbershops, to the beauty shops, mm -hmm. to just kind of help people break it down to simple language to understand early detection saves lives. You have to break through that barrier where people say, well, I, if I don't go to the doctor, I won't get any bad news. That's right. Although there may be bad news working inside your body. That's right. We just did a program in partnership with the Word Church and educated about 7,000 people, signed up 450 women to get screened, and even in there we found 11 cancers of just people just at random sitting in the community. We know that, and Iyad can talk more to this, but one in eight women are going to be diagnosed with breast cancer. I think there are so many high statistics yeah. that if we get people out and we get them early, we can help. I'm a survivor myself. Had uh -huh. I not had early detection, I wouldn't be here to talk about it. And thank goodness you're here to talk about it. Yes. I've known you for many years, too, Jacqueline. Right. Good to have right. you on the mm -hmm. broadcast, as I said earlier. Mm -hmm. What are some of the, how do you go about the screenings? Uh, what, 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 what's the process when you screen? How do you do that? Well, the process of screening for, in reference to our toxic cancer uh, outreach programs is, uh, first, we'd like to actually get out to the community. Our main focus is education. Sadly, much of the community here does not even understand that some of the cancer can be prevented. Similar to what you said, it's almost an acceptance. If God, this is God's decision, I must accept it. So the first aspect of screening is education. Once we educate them, individuals become more aware. With awareness, they come in and we actually screen them for breast cancer. We could do a clinical breast exam, we could do a colonoscopy, we even ask them to check their skin. On top of it, we'll even look inside their mouths for oral cancers. So screening itself is actually a physical check. But there are three diseases that you could check yourself, skin cancer, testicular cancer, and breast cancer. An individual themselves can screen their own selves many times each month. And if you do this, you can get ahead of the curve. As, as Dr. Jacqueline Bailey did, you got early detection. And as a result of that, you were able to turn that corner and be sitting here with us cancer-free. Absolutely. What's your advice in our final 30 seconds or so? Leave us with a thought on why all of this is important. We're here to save lives, and um, 
the quality of life is important. And we see so many people present in late stage cancer. The sooner we get to you, the better. So pay attention, um, call the cancer answer line, get in, get screening. If you don't have insurance, we'll figure out a way to get it done. If you have insurance, we'll make sure that you get a good provider and have access to our system. A medical home is important so that some uh, primary care physician is, is paying attention to your whole health system. In so. our final 15 seconds, you're speaking directly to the African American community. You're speaking to everybody. Correct. But, but a lot of emphasis is on the African American right. community. Because we have higher rates of incidence in the African American community, and we're getting later stages diagnosed. Breast cancer and prostate cancer are 18 to 19 percent higher mm -hmm. diagnosis later in stage. If we come in earlier, we catch it earlier, you have a better chance of great quality of life and better outcomes. Jacqueline Bailey says amen to that too. Amen. Amen to that. <laughs> Dr. Jacqueline Bailey, Dr. Hassan, uh, Iyad Hassan, both of the uh, clinic Tossic Cancer Center, the Cleveland Clinic Tossic Cancer Center. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. The Cleveland Tossic Cancer Institute. Institute. Thank you so much for being on. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having us. Oh, it is our pleasure. There's a phone number, 866-2223-8100. We've had that number on the screen. Write it down. I'm going to take a break in a moment. Yvette Clark of the Urban League of Greater Cleveland has some words of her own in a moment. This is the Morning Exchange segment. That means the Urban League of Greater Cleveland has a voice in this part of the broadcast. Yvette Clark, Workforce Development with the Urban League. Hey, Yvette. Hi, good morning. Good morning. What's, what are you thinking about today? I'm thinking about the Urban League is an amazing place to be. And it's an amazing place to work and an amazing place to come and share and grow. We're empowering people and changing lives at the Urban mm -hmm. League. Specifically, we uh, started a new program in 2013 called yeah. SOAR. Yeah. Solid opportunities for advancement and retention. And we are proud to have been able to impact the lives of 80 families mm -hmm. uh, doing workforce development training and getting prepared them prepared to go into the workforce. And people can you know, link up with the, with the Urban League and, and get in these classes? Absolutely. Just make a phone call and we'll place them on, the, on our list. We've got a phone number we'll usually put on the screen. It is 622-0999, if memory serves me correct. That's right. It is the Urban League's number. You are really involved with this. You, you, as you said, you, you're making inroads and you are making positive changes in the lives of, of Peter, people in the greater Cleveland area. Yes, you know, Leon, it's very amazing to see the transformation of the individuals who walk through our doors mm -hmm. from the first day to the end of the four-week program. They have um, had a revelation, if you uh -huh. will, and they're meeting themselves for the first time, and it's a great process to see as we take them through personal and professional development and growth and recognizing their skills and talents. Mm -hmm. And so we're also proud to be able to build an amazing talent pool for yeah. employers. So it's a win-win for the community. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Yvette Clark, for being on the broadcast. She's with Workforce Development at the Urban League of Greater Cleveland. That's Kaleidoscope today. I'm Leon Bibb. Take care. Kaleidoscope, a weekly public affairs program brought to you in partnership with the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, Kaleidoscope Magazine, and News Channel 5.